story concerning the fate of Esido and his evil companions. Chief Obori lived at a town called Adiagor, which is on the right bank of the Calabar River. He was a wealthy chief, and belonged to the Egbo Society. He had many large canoes, and plenty of slaves to paddle them. These canoes he used to fill up with new yams, each canoe being under one head slave and containing eight paddles. The canoes were capable of holding three puncheons of palm oil, and cost eight hundred rods each. When they were full, about ten of them used to start off together and paddle to Rio del Rey. They went through creeks all the way, which run through mangrove swamps, with palm oil trees here and there. Sometimes in the tornado season it was very dangerous crossing the creeks, as the canoes were so heavily laden, having only a few inches above the water, that quite a small wave would fill the canoe and cause it to sink to the bottom. Although most of the boys could swim, it often happened that some of them were lost, as there are many large alligators in these waters. After four days hard paddling they would arrive at Rio del Rey, where they had very little difficulty in exchanging their new yams for bags of dried shrimps and sticks with smoked fish on them. Chief Obori had two sons, named Ioi and Esido. Their mother having died when they were babies, the children were brought up by their father. As they grew up, they developed entirely different characters. The eldest was very hard-working and led a solitary life. But the younger son was fond of gaiety and was very lazy. In fact, he spent most of his time in the neighboring towns playing and dancing. When the two boys arrived at the respective ages of 18 and 20, their father died, and they were left to look after themselves. According to native custom, the elder son, Ioi, was entitled to the whole of his father's estate. But being very fond of his younger brother, he gave him a large number of rods and some land with a house. Immediately Esido became possessed of the money he became wilder than ever, gave big feasts to his companions, and always had his house full of women, upon whom he spent large sums. Although the amount his brother had given him on his father's death was very large, in the course of a few years Esido had spent it all. He then sold his house and effects, and spent the proceeds on feasting. While he had been living this gay and unprofitable life, Io I had been working harder than ever at his father's old trade, and had made many trips to Rio del Rey himself. Almost every week he had canoes laden with yams going down river and returning after about twelve days with shrimps and fish, which Io I himself disposed of in the neighboring markets, and he very rapidly became a rich man. At intervals he remonstrated with Esido on his extravagance, but his warnings had no effect. If anything, his brother became worse. At last the time arrived when all his money was spent, so Esido went to his brother and asked him to lend him two thousand rods, but Io refused, and told Esido that he would not help him in any way to continue his present life of debauchery but that if he liked to work on the farm and trade, he would give him a fair share of the profits. This Esido indignantly refused, and went back to the town and consulted some of the very few friends he had left as to what was the best thing to do. The men he spoke to were thoroughly bad men, and had been living upon Esido for a long time. They suggested to him that he should go round the town and borrow money from the people he had entertained, and then they would run away to Acpabrio's town, which was about four days' march from Calabar. This Esido did, and managed to borrow a lot of money, although many people refused to lend him anything. Then at night he set off with his evil companions, who carried his money, as they had not been able to borrow any themselves, being so well known. 
When they arrived at Acpabrio's town they found many beautiful women and graceful dancers. They then started the same life again, until after a few weeks most of the money had gone. They then met and consulted together how to get more money, and advised Esido to return to his rich brother, pretending that he was going to work and give up his old life. He should then get poison from a man they knew of, and place it in his brother's food, so that he would die, and then Esido would become possessed of all his brother's wealth, and they would be able to live in the same way as they had formerly. Esido, who had sunk very low, agreed to this plan, and they left Acpabrio's town the next morning. After marching for two days, they arrived at a small hut in the bush where a man who was an expert poisoner lived, called Okponesip. He was the head Juju man of the country, and when they had bribed him with eight hundred rods he swore them to secrecy and gave Esido a small parcel containing a deadly poison which he said would kill his brother in three months. All he had to do was to place the poison in his brother's food. When Esido returned to his brother's house, he pretended to be very sorry for his former mode of living, and said that for the future he was going to work. I, oh, I was very glad when he heard this, and at once axed his brother in, and gave him new clothes and plenty to eat. In the evening, when supper was being prepared, Esido went into the kitchen, pretending he wanted to get a light from the fire for his pipe. The cook being absent and no one about, he put the poison in the soup, and then returned to the living room. He then asked for some tombo, which was brought, and when he had finished it, he said he did not want any supper, and went to sleep. His brother, Ioi, had supper by himself and consumed all the soup. In a week's time he began to feel very ill, and as the days passed he became worse, so he sent for his Juju man. When Esido saw him coming, he quietly left the house. But the Juju man, by casting lots, very soon discovered that it was Esido who had given poison to his brother. When he told Ioi this, he would not believe it, and sent him away. However, when Esido returned, his elder brother told him what the Juju man had said, but that he did not believe him for one moment, and had sent him away. Esido was much relieved when he heard this, but as he was anxious that no suspicion of the crime should be attached to him, he went to the household Juju, and having first sworn that he had never administered poison to his brother, he drank out of the pot. Three months after he had taken the poison Io, I died, much to the grief of everyone who knew him, as he was much respected, not only on account of his great wealth, but because he was also an upright and honest man, who never did harm to anyone. Esido kept his brother's funeral according to the usual custom, and there was much playing and dancing, which was kept up for a long time. Then, Esido paid off his old creditors in order to make himself popular, and kept open house, entertaining most lavishly, and spending his money in many foolish ways. All the bad women about collected at his house, and his old evil companions went on as they had done before. Things got so bad that none of the respectable people would have anything to do with him, and at last the chiefs of the country, seeing the way Esido was squandering his late brother's estate, assembled together, and eventually came to the conclusion that he was a witch man and had poisoned his brother in order to acquire his position. The chiefs, who were all friends of the late Io, and who were very sorry at the death, as they knew that if he had lived he would have become a great and powerful chief, made up their minds to give Esido the Ekpe War Juju, which is a very strong medicine, and gets into men's heads, so that when they have drunk it they are compelled to speak the truth and if they have done wrong they die very shortly. 
Esido was then told to dress himself and attend the meeting at the Palaver House, and when he arrived the chiefs charged him with having killed his brother by witchcraft. Esido denied having done so, but the chiefs told him that if he were innocent he must prove it by drinking the bowl of Ekpewar medicine which was placed before him. As he could not refuse to drink, he drank the bowl off in great fear and trembling. And very soon the Jew Jew having got hold of him, he confessed that he had poisoned his brother, but that his friends had advised him to do so. About two hours after drinking the Ekpe War, Esido died in great pain. The friends were then brought to the meeting and tied up to posts, and questioned as to the part they had taken in the death of Io. As they were too frightened to answer, the chiefs told them that they knew from Esido that they had induced him to poison his brother. They were then taken to the place where Io was buried, the grave having been dug open, and their heads were cut off and fell into the grave, and their bodies were thrown in after them as a sacrifice for the wrong they had done. The grave was then filled up again. Ever since that time, whenever anyone is suspected of being a witch, he is tried by the Ekpe War Juju. Thank you for joining us for today's fairy tale. We hope these stories bring joy and meaning to your day. If you love our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any exciting tales. Wishing you a good night and sweet dreams. See you in the next story.